Good morning and welcome to our Sunday school time today. Uh, this will be the lesson for July the 31st. Uh, as you know, last week we began a series about how how we're to love as as the way that God loves. Um, last week we talked about uh, who our neighbor was. We we're studying this this uh, series of called How to Love Your Neighbor. So last week we defined according to the Bible. We looked at the definition of who, who, who our neighbors are, and uh, if you remember, uh, our neighbors are not just defined by the people that live around us, but it's uh, it's everyone uh, that we come in contact with um, that can be defined as our neighbor. So today we're looking at once we've defined who our neighbor is, we're we're looking at what is what does love really look like? What is the definition of love? Uh, love is used in a in a, a many different ways for many different things. Uh, we'll say, you know, we love a particular sports team, or we love a particular dessert. Uh, we uh, it, it applies to just about everything uh, that we come in contact with. We can say that we love this, or or we we hate it. But love is uh, the the word love used in the Bible is. Uh, not just used flippantly or used for for uh, just to express our feelings but it's it expresses what god has wanted us to possess the love that god wants us to have um, is far greater than what our culture or our nations are defined as love it's greater than that uh, the love that god has is so great that he sent his son to die for us and that is the kind of love that we're talking about. Love has its origin with God. Um, our our love, if we have the type of love that that we're talking about here, is grounded. Uh, it's based on the character of God. God's character is based on love. God is love, and the best way we can help our neighbors and and uh, show our love to the neighbors is to love them as God loves them. And sometimes that's hard for us to do. Uh, sometimes we don't think about uh, what true love is and what it means to love someone. Paul was teaching here in 1 Corinthians 13, it's, uh, often called the love chapter. Paul, Paul was teaching uh, to the Corinthians. Um, Corinth, Corinth, Corinth itself was a vital business hub, a commercial hub for Greece. Um, it was it had two primary deities there were two primary gods there in Corinth um, there was Poseidon the god of the sea and after that the god of goddess of love these were the two main gods that were worshipped there uh, Paul established a church there when he visited Corinth he established a church there and he wrote to the church here in this letter to answer questions and settle disputes about theology and how to live out the Christian faith. So there's a lot here for us to learn. Uh, even though it was written there in, in the first century of Greece, it, it, there's a lot here for us to learn. Um, one of the things that we need to learn is what love is. Uh, and I know that you've, you've probably been taught this before and you've known this before, but just kind of a review in our minds, what are the different types of love that uh, we talk about. There's a uh, eros love. It's a passionate or a sexual love. That's where the word erotic comes from. Um, this is not the kind of love that Paul was talking about here. Um, but a lot of times when we talk about love, that's the kind of love people think about. There was also the phileo love, or what's known as brotherly love. Um, that was, there's, Brotherly love is a good thing for us to have. As a matter of fact, um, that phileo love is is love that we are to have for each other as brothers and sisters. But here is the word that Paul was using here, and you probably you know this word, you've heard it before, but it's agape love. God is the source of agape love. He is the ultimate manifestation of agape love. Um, First John. 4 7 tells us that 
Uh, agape love is not about emotion, but it's about a, but an action. We put uh, our our love, our words into action. Uh, it compels believers to see others and treat others the way that God would treat them. Uh, it affirms um, that that eternity matters. It affirms that it's a God sent His Son that He loved us so much that His Son would die for us that we could have salvation. And I know the faith is the basis for our salvation but without the love that god had to send his son to die for us then we wouldn't have nothing to have faith in but god has sent his son to die for us that we could have salvation and that we could have eternal life so this is the type of love that we're talking about agape love a, a god uh character love character of god type love before we begin our lesson uh, as I said, it would be in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, and we'll be reading, I think, 13 verses. Before we begin, though, I'd like to have a prayer, and I'd like to just thank you for joining us today. But let's go to the Lord in prayer now, and we'll begin our lesson. We'll dive into the Scripture. Lord, we thank you for this day, and thank you for your many blessings. And Lord, we pray today that you would just be with us as we study your word. Father, uh, I pray that your name would be glorified and uplifted, and Father, that we would... Uh, not say anything, Father, that would be uh, be out of the way. But Father, I pray that Your Holy Spirit would lead us, that Your Holy, that You would speak through us today, and let Your Word be proclaimed the way that You would have it. And Lord, I pray for each believer at home, and I pray for each one who may be listening that's not a believer. I pray today, Father, that that this lesson would change our lives, and that it, Father, it would it would move us, Father, to love more and to 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 worship more and to, to tell others about you more if we, we're already Christians. But, Father, if we're not Christians, I pray today that, that this love that we're talking about, Father, would compel someone to come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And I thank you for Whitefield Baptist Church. And I thank you for the word that we have. And I pray that you would use it today to speak to us, Father, and that your name would be glorified. And in these, name, in these things we pray in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, so we're looking at the scripture, um, and the the scripture that I'm going to read is verses one through three of of First Corinthians thirteen. We're going to see here that love ought, ought to un undergird everything that we do. Love ought to be the reason that we do everything. Uh, it says, though I speak with tongues of men of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Paul is telling the people here that I can have, uh, I can have the greatest, uh, I can speak with tongues of men, I can speak with tongues of angels, but if I don't have charity or love, then it's, as, it's just a noise. It says sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal. Um, the, um, Paul is telling us here that we can, we can speak Back then, the speaking of tongues was um, was uh, existed, and he talked about those tongues and speaking with tongues of men and speaking with tongues of angels. But if we do though, if they did those things there in the church, if they did those things and did not have love, then it was just as a noise. Uh, charity is defined as, as love. Uh, there in the King James Version, it says that if I have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Um, the word love can be substituted here for charity, but not just love, but God's love. The agape love that we talked about earlier. Um, by New Testament times, agape uh, came to represent the God-like or God-like quality of love. It was a um, it was not an abstract term. It wasn't just an emotion, but it was a an active type of relationship. It was an active term. Uh, so when they talked about agape love, when they talked about uh, love, then Paul was telling the people that they can accomplish um, their their high and lofty goals. Um, they could become the greatest speakers. They could have be speakers of men and and even speakers in tongues. But without love, none of that meant anything. Without charity, it meant nothing. It was just a noise. 
in our thinking, charity sometimes uh, denotes a benevolent act. Uh, we give to charity, or we donate clothes to charity, or we do we do different things. Um, but but being charitable is, is a desired human trait. Uh, trait. It, it is a just being giving stuff to people, giving them money, or giving them clothes, or buying things for people is not necessarily an act of love it does not indicate love but a person we can do those kind of things just out of our emotion but but the, the things that we do without god's love and without his love in our hearts those things are are as as are, are just noise it may put other we may put ourselves in the, in the light of other people we may be seen as good or or we may be uplifted for what we do or donation that we make or, or something that we do for someone else. But it, it's a, sometimes a misguided attempt to gain favor with God. But you see, God is not impressed with what we do uh, in the name of ourselves or to glorify ourselves. God is, a, God is concerned about what we do to glorify Him and to bring others to know Him. A, a God like love is what paul was talking about here paul said if, if i speak with the tongues of angels uh, or the tongues of men then if i don't do it with love it's, it's just as sounding brass uh just a noise paul said also he continued in verse two he says if i and though i have the gift of prophecy and i understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have faith so that i can move mountains and I do not have love or have charity, then I am nothing. Uh, prophecy was uh, a uh, the ability to to uh, divinely uh, foretell foretell and uh, to predict what was going to happen, to tell what was coming. Um, but just to be able to to have the gift of prophecy. Without love, it, it meant nothing. There's an old saying, and I learned this when I worked with Michelin, that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You see, just speaking words or prophesying uh, was, not, was not enough. We had to put our faith into action. Paul said, what if I have faith so that I can move mountains? Um, faith strong enough to move mountains was a, was a strong faith. A strong conviction to believe that that God could and wouldn't move mountains through us was was something that Paul was saying that even though I have that strong faith I am nothing I am absolutely nothing I'm zero without love of God it said what if in verse 3 he says what if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor um, and and give my body to be burned at stake and, and have not charity, it profits me nothing. You see, all these things are acts that man can do on their own. Man can give to the poor. Man could even sacrifice his own self in place of someone else. But if he doesn't do it with the love of God, the agape love, then it's nothing. It's nothing. It profits me nothing. I gain nothing. You see, when we... When we do things in the name of Christ, when we do things in the, with agape love, when we tell others about Christ, when we, when we serve others the way that Christ served, then, then it, it means something. To do it without that means nothing. It's written here in the, in the NIV. It says, I gain nothing. Um, Paul responded without what, that whatever man does without Christian love uh, amounts to nothing just like the person who performs them. What makes us worthy of salvation? It's the love of God that, that sent His Son and then our faith in Him to trust Him. So without love, then there we're nothing. We skip down to the second part of our lesson, uh, which is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. And it talks about love again. We talk about charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemingly. It seeketh not her own. 
It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Charity suffereth long. Long suffering is is dealing with 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 uh, suffering for a long period of time. The love that's talked about here reflects the character of Christ. Long lasting passion is what long suffering is. Enduring uh, suffering, mildness. Being slow to avenge, being slow to to uh, to get mad at people who try our patience, uh, to be to love it is is willing to wait, to wait on those that uh, that try our patience. Uh, be grateful that God has provided us love that we can share with others, and that we can be patient toward others. Uh, his desire is not to destroy people or get mad at people. But his desire is to save. And that's the type of love that we need to have. Uh, we shouldn't get frustrated when people won't listen or when people contradict us or people contradict the Bible. Uh, we, we, get, we get frustrated for them, but we shouldn't be mad, but we should be long-suffering and continue, continue to strive to share the love of Christ with them. And continue, continue to strive to share the word with them. Charity says it's kind. When we have patience with others, that demonstrates kindness. It provides us opportunity to act kindly when, when we face those people who sometimes are not kind to us. Um, rather than act in haste and be unsensitive to them, we, we need to be kind. It said, charity envieth not. Uh, love admires and appreciates um, what has taken place in the lives of other people without becoming jealous of what's going on. Without us, it, it envieth not. It does not cause jealousy in our life. Romans 12, 15 says that rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. So we should not get upset when, when some people have a, an opportunity that maybe we didn't have. Or maybe some people get a blessing that maybe we didn't receive. We shouldn't, we shouldn't envy what they have, but we should, we should rejoice with them. Rejoice when they rejoice and weep when they weep. Charity vaunteth not itself up. Charity is not puffed up. To vaunt is to mean to boost yourself, to boost oneself, to puff yourself up, to, to blow yourself up, to brag about our accomplishments, to, uh, to inflate our, ourself, to to become puffed up, to think that we're being better than others, to be filled with pride. Uh, love doesn't allow such in our lives. Charity does not allow those things. It does not behave itself unseemly. It, it means we don't act unbecoming of what a Christian is. Um, the uh, CSB Bible reads, love is not rude. Love, it, it says that we're not rude to others we're not unseemingly to others it does not dishonor others it seeketh not her own we doesn't insist on our own way we don't insist on having it in our way all the time but we we give in to others as long as they're uh, following christ and it's not easily provoked or irritated it's not easily angered um it thinketh no evil these things that Paul is writing is telling them these people of problems that they've had and he's telling them how that will love if they fill their heart with love they wouldn't have these things when we think about we, we think it's no evil it's speaking about wicked or troublesome the things things that are destructive so love does not keep a log of wrongs that people have done when we say it doesn't it think it's no evil then we don't hold grudges. We don't. We don't have a list of the reasons that that we won't uh, befriend someone or tell someone about Christ. We don't base our responses on what others do, but we base our responses on what God would do. 
It's, it's our love, the love that God has placed in our heart when he placed the Holy Spirit there. The love that we should have for others, the love that Christ had for others. It says, charity rejoices not in iniquity, but charity rejoices in the truth. Um, to act unjustly or unrighteously or wrongly, that's what iniquity is. Iniquity is, is acting wrongly. Um, but truth uh, is, is being doing right. Being righteous, just as Jesus Christ was truth, we should be truth. And we should act with truth, not in wickedness. Um, wickedness, acting wrongly, acting unrighteously, these things lead to destruction. But to act, to act righteously, uh, it leads to salvation. It leads to truth. It leads to Jesus Christ. It leads to what we should do. It's, it's this, this statement that he's making here is rejoicing not in iniquity, but rejoicing in truth. It's condemning people for rejoicing when someone else fails. It's condemning people for being glad that they did not succeed in whatever they were doing. Um, but it's rejoicing when we see someone live out the truth of God in their lives. It's rejoicing when they someone commits himself to truth. It's rejoicing when people live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't have jealousy. We don't have pride. And it's, it's rejoicing not in iniquity, but rejoicing in truth. Verse 7 says, Charity beareth all things. Bearing means to cover or protect. It's, it's a forbearance. Paul meant to protect. Uh, and, and, and then love handles others in a way not to shame them, even in their sin. Even when we confront someone about something they've done wrong, we should not shame them. Uh, he does, forbearance doesn't diminish under the weight of, of sin. It doesn't diminish under the weight of stress uh, forbearance uh, we may we may have a rejection by people people that we're trying to love and even when when it's our enemies we should we should be forbearing we should have tolerance we should want them to learn the love of christ Love believeth all things. Love trust. Love believes others. Love gives the benefit of the doubt rather than basing something on hearsay, than immediately ju uh, jumping to accusing a person of something when we don't know the facts. Love believeth all things. Love gives second chances. Love forgives. These are the things that Paul's talking about here that these things must have been going on in the Corinthian church. He goes on and talks about charity hopeth all things. Charity gives us confidence, a confident assurance. It, it, it means that we should have an optimistic conviction, that we should be optimistic about the love of Christ, about how Christ's love can change others. Confidence that though a person has failed and though a person has done wrong, if, if they turn to Christ, then they can be saved and that all can be set right and that, that they can recover from their mistakes just as we recovered from ours when we came to Christ and that we can move forward in faith and that those that we are talking to can, even though they may be in deep in sin, that, that Christ died for them as well and he can save them. And, and that's the hope that we're given through, through Christ. Finally, charity, it says, endureth all things. To preserve, to hold fast. Even under trial, or even in misfortune. People will try to challenge us sometime and give us question to, to question, give us reason to question sincerity. And rather than immediately give up on them, love says that, that we should endure all things. That love preserves our our love toward them is preserved because of the love of Christ. That is the type of love that Christ had for us. He didn't forgive up on us, but someone kept sharing with us until we became convicted and we turned our life over to him. Love is to be exercised with wisdom. Uh, sometimes 
love has to be tough love. If someone is taking advantage of you or someone is, is doing things, we don't give up on them, but we may have to exercise tough love. And if you know, if you've had children, you know what tough love is sometimes. It doesn't need to be a love that drives someone away, but it's the love that Christ, that even God has to have tough love on us sometimes. When we get, when we get caught up in sin, there will be consequences for our sin. It's not that God doesn't love us. It's that he wants us to, to be corrected and to love him and to serve him. If, if we love the way God loves, then we let that love guide us in the way that we treat other people and the way we express our love to them. Final verses here, verses 8 through 13. It said, uh, love does not diminish or does not diminish or fade or, or go away. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But love, love never fails. Let's just camp on this verse 8 for just a minute. Love never fails. Um, it, it doesn't perish. Love is, will always be there. But prophecies, they, they will come to an end. They will fail. Uh, prophecies will cease. They will, they will pass away. There will be there will be no need for a prophecy when when we are in eternity with Christ. So there would be no need for prophecy. If their tongues they will be stilled or they will cease. Tongues were there and, and they've given temporarily to this world to 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 give the word of God to, to people who, who didn't understand. But there'll be no need for tongues in eternity. Where there's knowledge, the knowledge will vanish away too, because we will we will ne we will not we will have more knowledge than we've ever had before. It will come to an end. Prophecies and tongues and these things that the Holy Spirit has provided, they're valuable for the church. They're valuable uh, in here on earth, but their value is only temporary. They're they're not eternal things, and eventually these things will stop. Verse 9, it goes on, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. It's saying we don't know everything. We, we haven't experienced heaven yet. We, don't, we, don't, we just have a touch of it. So we, we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But in verse 10, it says, But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is part shall be done away with. You see, when Christ returns, and when he sets up his kingdom here, what we know in part, we will experience in full. So all of these things will be done away with. Verse 11, it says, Paul says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Paul is referring to our life here on earth. When we're growing up, we're learning to speak. We play uh, with childish things. We speak as a child. Uh, we understand as a child, but as we grow, we become more knowledgeable. We become aware of the Holy Spirit. We become aware of what Christ has done for us. And when we become Christians, we put away the childish things, the way of the world. But when eternity comes, we'll know all things and we'll, we'll, we'll be as Christ has said that we will, we will, we will be known as we are known. It says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I'm known. We see through a glass darkly. When you, when you think about the, the mirrors that they used in those days, it, it was not of the glass and the mirrors that, like we have today, but it was a, a, maybe a piece of brass or a piece of silver that had been polished and they could see the reflection and we know the reflection was not always a good reflection of of if you look in those type of objects you don't see yourself clearly but he says we th we see through a glass darkly face to face and we know in part but then we shall be known as i even as i also am known 
the tr reflection of us will be a true reflection of the reflection of God in us, Christ in us. If Christ is not in us, then that reflection would not be, it'll be a true reflection, but it will be a reflection of the sin and the, and the, the serving of the rejection of Christ in our life. But we'll be known as we are known. Whatever is there will be reflected as truth. And there'll be no denying it. There'll be no saying, but God, I, I served you, but God will say, but you didn't do it in my name. Depart from me, for I never knew you. And then he goes on to say, and now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. When God says that, he says, now abideth faith, hope, and charity. Faith is what gets us saved faith is that we put our trust in christ faith is that we believe that he died on the cross for our sin faith is is knowing that that he uh has given us a way of salvation we have faith in him uh, that's that's the the means whereby we are joined with christ these three abide faith hope and charity hope is the confident anticipation the confidence that we have that god will return and that god's promises are sure and god's promises are true and and uh the, it will there will be a glorification day for us as believers where we become perfect as he is perfect there'll be an an, an unconditional uh, love that that god will have and that we'll have and that it will exist in each one of us and it talks about charity. It says, of these three, faith, hope, and love, then charity, the love, is the preeminent, preeminent virtue that, that God says undergirds everything that we do. You see that love, that charity that he's talking about reflects the love of, of God through Christ Jesus. You know, our churches face challenges, but our our, our churches can face no greater challenge than to live out the model that that paul has given us here in this in this this part of the scripture we as believers the church we are we're being challenged here by the word to love our neighbors but love is more than emotion love is not always simple it's not always an easy thing to do nevertheless the love that Paul described here is critical for us to be effective witnesses. It's critical for us to, to reach others for Christ. It's a love that reflects the love that Christ manifested by his coming and dying for, for all of us, for our mankind. We need to remember that we are to love others as Christ loved and as God loved us. We're to love others the way that God loved us. I pray that this this lesson is will settle in your heart and your mind and that we will strive to love in a way that God has taught us to love and that we can reach others for Christ through through his love and through his word. Thank you for for joining us this day. I pray that you have a a good Sunday and a good week. I uh, can't believe that tomorrow will be August the 1st, but uh here it is it's almost the end of our summer for for school children and we're about to enter into the fall season i pray that you would be blessed and that god would receive glory in everything you do and uh, we just thank you for joining us today and i'll see you next week god bless you I got